What's happening guys? Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So tonight we are going to take a look at the September 27th edition of Impact. Another good show as we build toward Bound for Glory. So Bound for Glory is about two and a half weeks away. We pretty much have all the matches set up. They're probably going to be, I would say, at least another match or two. Um, but before we get into this week's show, I got a chance to watch the... Uh, I guess the behind-the-scenes video of Slammiversary that Impact had posted on their YouTube page. And if you guys haven't checked it out, it's a really great video. I was about 10 minutes long, but they, you know, just kind of showed everything that went into setting up the Rebel the days preceding. I think it was actually the day of the show that they were setting everything up. But again, a great video available on their YouTube page. So go check that out. But on to last night's show. Uh, I really enjoyed the show. I thought... We had enough, you know, going on for the standalone show, and we're uh, starting to build that Bound for Glory card, which uh, which tur is turning out to be pretty good. I'm excited for a couple matches, especially the one that was announced last night, but uh, we will get to that. So we open the show with the Knockouts Championship match, Tessa Blanchard defending against Fabi Apache. Um, this is a good match. I really enjoyed this. Again, this is what Impact brings to the table with showing up in new places using local talent i mean last week we saw fabi versus alicia edwards this week against tessa i would have never seen her wrestle otherwise but this is great fresh new matchups get new people that you generally wouldn't see and they put on a great match um i i think this match they kind of gave them a short amount of time so they kind of had to get all their stuff in there as brian cage would say um but they, they definitely could have dragged this into a longer match. But again, very, very competent competitors in the ring. Uh, Tessa eventually goes over with the Hammerlock DDT to retain her title. After the match, gets on the mic. She says, you know, I beat every knockout you have back there. I came to Mexico. I beat the best Mexico has to offer. So basically, I'm the best wrestler. All of a sudden, we hear Escuchame. Video pops up on the Tron. It's Taya. She says, you can't say you're the best because you haven't beat me yet. And we have our match for Bound for Glory. Well, Taya had challenged her at this point later on in the evening. Tessa accepted the challenge. And uh, this is definitely a match that could steal the show. Um, one I'm very lo much looking forward to. Uh, like I said earlier on, um, Taya's, well, I guess she's really only been in one big feud in Impact, and that was with Rosemary and their... Uh, match which should have happened at Bound for Glory last year in the uh, Red Wedding match, which they ended up having a... Shit, I don't remember the name. You guys, please let me know in the comments. Uh, the match they had that ended with Rosemary hitting a pile driver through a table off the top rope. Uh, Demon's Dance match, that's what it was. Um, but yeah, that was a fantastic match. Uh, I expect this to be very, very good. Uh, great to see Taya back again. Um, she obviously wasn't at the tapings. She was wrestling somewhere in LA, but, um, they, they needed, you know, they had her on the shelf and they were able to utilize her cause she hasn't been around since right after redemption. I think she worked maybe a couple shows after that, but since then we haven't seen her. So good stuff there. I am glad that match happened. Uh, we go backstage and Eddie Edwards is there. Alicia walks up. Eddie's apparently his kendo stick's name is Kenny because she yelled at him for going after three guys last week. He's like, no, Kenny was with me. He's like, your kendo stick is not a person. Um, then Johnny Impact comes in. They hype the match. Still not a huge fan of, uh, I guess, Johnny's face promos. I don't know. Turd cutter and whatnot. It just seems like, I mean, I get it. And I think Johnny fits the mold for the faced of the company character, which I'm, I'm having a hard time with the main event for Bound for Glory, which way to go. I could easily see them putting the title on Johnny, but I could see them keeping it on Ares. I mean, I was honestly surprised last year that the title didn't go on Johnny because I figured, you know, perfect baby face, this is what you want, is the guy, he's got a clean record, he's, you know, an actor, does all types of stuff, now he's a star on Survivor. Um, but yeah, that, that should be interesting, but obviously I'll get more to that when I do my uh, predictions video in, on probably, that'll be up the 13th of October, the day before. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, it's keeping things interesting at least, um, even if the build hasn't been 
super, super great for, I guess, people's expectations of a title match. But, I mean, last year's wasn't great either. And I think Eli and Johnny had a fantastic match last year, except it was ruined by someone. But that someone will not be mentioned because he's thankfully gone from the company. Uh, so then, still backstage, oh, we get the Sammy and OVE. Sammy obviously credits himself and the Chris brothers for selling out Bound for Glory. Um, Sammy announces that he's going to give one of the Chris brothers an opportunity tonight. He looks at Dave and says, sorry, Dave, but I got to give Jake this one. Jake's all excited. And then Sammy announces that he will be facing Brian Cage, which obviously his excitement changed then. Dave starts laughing at him. This was a good segment. I really enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, uh, Sammy kind of hypes Jake up saying, you know, if you beat him, you'll become the, the medium draw. So good stuff there. And up next, we probably had my favorite segment of the evening. And this was Eli Drake. He was walking about Mexico. He was outside talking about his family history, his uncle that had helped build whatever statue or uh, monument was behind him. And he started walking up to vendors and talking to them. And it, it was just it was just really an all-around great segment. Um, it's available on the YouTube page if you guys didn't see this. Um, definitely worth a look. But this was all for him promoting his open challenge next week. Um, so that should be good. I mean, I still think they need to give Eli a face run and just kind of go with it. But again, there's so many options there in the uh, main title picture in the future. So we'll see what they end up doing. But... Yeah, I, I think Eli is definitely the way to go, but I guess I'm a little biased there. So up next, we have Jay Crisp versus Brian Cage. Surprise, surprise, Callahan and Dave were on the outside. They obviously have to get involved. Callahan did hit a beautiful tornado DDT on Brian Cage using the guardrail, um, but outside of a little bit of offense that Jake had, Cage kind of kicked the crap out of him. To no one's surprise, I'm sure. He ended up going over with the drill claw um, after the match. Callahan and Dave Chris beat down Brian Cage. Lights go out. Lights come back on. Dave is missing. All of a sudden, picture comes up on the Tron. It's the Lucha Brothers. They have Dave with, I think they had a sack over his head, and they start beating him with uh, some 2x4s or 2x3s, whatever size they were. Um, so, yeah, that, that was that. Um, good stuff. Then we have a McKenzie interview. She is interviewing Aries, Moose, and Cross. Uh, Moose is still going about hitting on McKenzie. Um, he says that Eddie, you're not. You walk around like you're the crazy one, but you're not. We're the crazy ones. And then uh, Cross says to Johnny that uh, Johnny Impact is going to become Johnny Neck Brace tonight. Uh, you know, I, I really like what they're doing with this whole faction here. I mean, while Aries is the world champion, I mean, you, we're kind of seeing more build on Moose and Cross at least last night. Um, I am so happy that they decided to turn Moose heel. I know some people liked him better as a face, but I feel like he, he seems like he's just having a good time with this, and uh, he's able to do a lot more. I mean, I feel like with Moose going up against Ares, it was more of he was just almost a placeholder, I guess, for, for I guess, the top baby face in the company going up against the top heel. Um, I, I still think that spot was reserved for Johnny, and, I mean, the build was just very lackluster with Moose getting the number one contendership. I mean, much like Johnny, granted. But um, I just wasn't feeling Moose as a face. I didn't, couldn't take him as a top guy. But as he's turned heel, he's just kind of gotten, gotten into his own, you know? I mean, he, his ridiculous outfits. He still looks like a million bucks, as he calls himself Money Moose now. Um, and just Killer Cross, I mean, there's there's not enough good things i can say about him um i feel like i don't know if you guys remember but back in the early 2000s uh wwe tried a gimmick with sean o'hare as i guess he was the devil's advocate or whatever um he his gimmick was but like i feel like that's what killer cross really is i mean he's just got very calm and stern well spoken he's just got that look um he's gonna be a future world champion there there's He's, you know, going to be a big star one day, and I think this is definitely going to be the catalyst, this group, to have great things for Moose and Cross in the future. And then we get the GWN flashback, LAX versus Daniels and AJ Styles. And then we have Grado and Joe Hendry backstage. Katarina walks up and says she has a gift for them. 
Apparently it's Murder Clown, and apparently Joe Hendry is going to face him next week. Again, utilizing new talent just to continue a feud with Katarina and Joe Hendry and Grado. So, I mean, that, that's what they should be doing with this extra talent that they're gaining. And we get Scarlett's announcement. Apparently she's doing an open talent search, and the winner will get her attention 24-7. Um, I don't remember who posted this on Twitter, but uh, somebody said something about Scarlett and Eli Drake having, you know, something together, and I, I think that would be fantastic, but I think Scarlett definitely should be utilized to uh, help the lower to mid-card talent kind of gain some notoriety. As she said, look what happened with Falaba. Um, but yeah, so that, that's, that should be interesting there. Uh, then we had the Desi Hit Squad versus LAX. Um, LAX, fantastic crowd reaction. No surprise there. Uh, the, the Desi Hit Squad, I, I, I don't know. I just, they're working well as a unit, a heel team. I, I think they're doing great there. They're just missing something, and I'm not quite sure what it is. I, I just still not completely sold on them yet. But this was a decent match. I mean, Hakeem and uh, Gersinder both looked good. Um Santana is just one day he is going to be an absolute star, I think, as a singles wrestler. Uh, not taking away anything from Ortiz because he's a very good wrestler on his own, but I, I think Santana is definitely has a singles career in his future. Uh, we got a handful of near falls, but then LAX eventually puts him away with the street sweeper. And then uh, King and the OGs come up on the Tron. This this was a fantastic promo by King. Um, he pulls out a picture of Conan when he was younger, in Mexico, wearing a mask. He says, you lost this mask, and that was the beginning of your end. And after you lost the mask, you lost a part of yourself, you started leeching off people. He says, he will end Conan, and then they burn the mask. Um, so this really got under Conan's skin, like the whole time we saw last week where Conan was kind of calm and collected and didn't wasn't letting any of this bother him. And this finally got to him. I, I just thought... King had great material here. It worked. We're starting to get, you know, Conan fired up for this. So I'm interested to see where we go next week before the match um, at Bound for Glory. But, again, they're able to build stuff up with more more things. Just just this little segment kind of gets you more involved. Uh, this was pretty good. We had Falaba. He was reading a bedtime story to KM as we see KM laying on a couch with a blanket. And, oh, no, no, he didn't have a blanket. He had a neck brace on, and then Fala took off his uh, his jacket or whatever he had and laid it across him as a blanket. Um, KM thanks him for taking care of him, and he tells him he needs to get revenge, not for him, but for us. Then we have Tessa backstage. This is where she accepts Taya's challenge. Um, she says that Taya had a lot to say for someone who was thousands of miles away. Um, she said, it's funny that once I showed up, you, Taya seemed to disappear. Then, obviously, Tessa accepts Taya's challenge. So, I already talked about that earlier on. Um, oh, so, when I spoke about the, uh, behind-the-scenes Slammiversary video, I'm just bringing this up, because next we had Kiara Hogan and Ali vs. Sue Young and the Undead Maid of Honor, uh, you could clearly see uh, Casey Spinelli doing, going through the motions while they were practicing to do Sue Young's entrance. So I just thought that was funny. Um, Allie, what a great reaction. Um, definitely the top baby face in the knockouts division, hands down. Always gets a great reaction regardless of where she goes. Uh, Sue Young, when she came out and did her entrance, you saw her uh, spit her mist into the air and it came back down on the camera. Just a little cool effect. Um, and then this, this was good. I got a kick out of this. Uh, Josh made it a point to mention that some, I don't know if they said someone or people on Twitter were criticizing about them talking during Sue Young's entrance, uh, which was pretty funny because I, I like that impact is able to, uh, you know, say things like that. Um, I don't know who portrayed the undead maid of honor. If you guys know, that would be good. Um, or I'd like to know because I thought she did a good job. She looked good. Um, this was a decent back and forth match. We got to see a lot of Kiara in the match. She looked really good. Um, they ended up picking up the victory when, uh, I think Allie hit a super kick on both Su Young and the Undead Maid of Honor, and then Kiara hit the spinning neck breaker on Su Young for the win. So she got the pin on the former knockout champion. 
Um, next week, they made that match with Kiara versus Sue Young. So that should be good. And then we get uh, Matt Seidel. He is outside meditating. Swan comes up and tells him, you know, to open his eyes. He's kind of done with the games. He's ready to fight. And he challenges him to a match next week, which we are apparently getting. I, I still think this match isn't going to happen. And we're going to get the two of them at Bound for Glory. I definitely think this would be a good match to open the show. Um, but I think it's between a Seidel and Swan match and Eli Drake open challenging, open challenging, open challenge match that probably should be on the Bound for Glory card, but we will see. We have two weeks for matches to be made because otherwise I think there is six matches. Um, knockouts, Worlds, LAX, uh, yeah, five. All right. Well, anyway. We'll we'll get to that uh, moose in the area. Maybe there is six. I don't know. Um, yeah, the, up next we had the main event of the evening. This was a tag team match of Johnny Impact and Eddie Edwards versus Moose and Killer Cross. Uh, this was a solid match. Good way to end the show. They gave this a decent amount of time. Um, Aries, Moose, and Cross all have their own or have their own music now as a team so that sounded really good i liked that yeah there's been five matches announced okay um johnny huge huge reaction um like i said hands down he, he is definitely the baby face of the company um and I, I think i think that was the right the right move for impact to do um granted how they came about this number one contendership to the match was lackluster but it was the right decision, especially with him on Survivor. So good stuff. Um, oh, the the uh, I really liked how Moose. Every time him and Edwards ended up in the ring together, Moose would tag right out. The, eventually, they end up getting in the ring, but it, it was just good to see them building a little something there. At one point, Eddie was in the corner and Moose was going to chop him, so he takes his hand and reaches deep down in his tights, um, and then he was going to chop him. Eddie ducks, and then he just goes over and casually tags Cross with the same hand that was down his trunks. I, I was kind of hoping for a reaction out of Cross, but oh well. It, it was it was a funny spot. Um, Ares ends up getting in the ring, grabs the title, goes to hit Johnny Impact. Impact ducks, ends up hitting Ares with it. Cross takes out Johnny Impact at that point. Eddie comes in with the kendo stick as the referee is taking the belt out of the ring. Eddie hits uh, Killer Cross, and Moose finishes off Eddie Edwards with a spear, and he gets the win. So that was a big win for Moose right there. Um, yeah, no, I, I thought, like I said, I thought it was an overall good show. Um, it flowed pretty well. We didn't get an overabundance of uh, ads promoting Bound for Glory. I mean, they kind of just let the the stuff play out um so next week we have the open challenge seidel versus swan su young versus kiara hogan um i'm sure there'll be some more good stuff as we will find out usually they post some more things up as we lead to next week's episode um but yeah i mean that's really all i have for you guys today hope you enjoyed my review um I will see you guys on Sunday for another edition of the Impact Report. And until then, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.